This is Steve Klein, and this is my video recording of Chapter 6, where we talk about trying to identify uh, what is the more or best way uh, to be successful. Is it self-discipline, or is it just the fact that you have maybe a high IQ score, or maybe you're really smart? Okay, some things that we're going to discuss here uh, in this video, uh, we're going to look at demographics of uh, our school, my school that we're at. Uh, take a look at our demographics and some information that we have there because that's going to tie in quite a bit. We're going to discuss our current 8th grade data as well. Okay, Then we're going to look at identifying what is our data telling us, what's, what are we getting from that data, and then once we look at that data, where do we go now, what do we do with that data. Okay, as we look at some of the demographics of the school that I'm in, um, and we pulled this up, it, it was quite interesting. And I started with the whole school district. Uh, I wanted to give you an idea of the whole school district, and then I'll break it down by eighth grade as well. But currently, right now, there are 9,726 total students in uh, the Bellevue Public School System. Um, and our ethnicity breakdown, uh, 74 Point three percent are white, nine point three percent are Hispanic, uh, nine point two percent are African American, two point six percent are Asian, and then we have a multitude of other ethnicities, um, and that totals up a four point six percent. Like for example, American Indian, um, along those lines as well. We've got quite a few other ethnicities in there um, as well. Uh, continue with our demographics here. 32% uh, of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. 13.8% um, of the students qualify for the High Ability Learners Program, or the HAL program here at the Bellevue Public Schools. And 2.2% are our English language learners. Okay, now that I've given you kind of the demographics of our overall school, I went through and I broke it down by our 8th grade data. Um, currently, there are 774 8th grade students in our three middle schools. Um, our, our schools or our school is made up of three middle schools in this case. So there's 774 total students there. 16% um, of the 8th grade qualify as a HAL student. So they qualify as a high-ability learner. That's uh, 124 of the 774 students. Around 201 students are on the honor roll, which is quantitated as 3.5 or above on a 4.0 scale. <clears throat> That's around 26% of all 8th graders. Okay, 26% of all 8th graders. Of those um, 124 house students, only 73 students were on the honor roll, which is 59% of the house students. So you're looking at about 60% of the house students, which means 40% of the house students were not on the honor roll of 3.5 or above. As you also look at that, that's 73 of the 201, which also looks at, uh, as you're looking at that, you're looking at about 100, roughly 130 students that are not house students that are on the honor roll. In terms of other data that we looked at, um, we looked at our NISA state scores, state testing scores, and what I did, since there were three middle schools um, and they had them broke down by middle school, I went ahead and just averaged them together. So as we look at our NISA reading scores, the average of the three middle schools was that 38.3% of the students were exceeding standards, 38.3%. Um, In the math scores, um, on our NISA math scores, only 22.3% of students were exceeding standards. Okay, so as we, as we looked at our data, what is that telling us in our schools? A um, couple of things that we came up with were that our high ability learners are not succeeding as we expected them to, as you would expect them to. Um, and there's a couple different things that we looked at and we're going to talk about as to maybe why. Um, 
just because you're considered a house student does not mean that you're going to be necessarily be successful uh, in school. Okay, it doesn't mean you're going to have high grades just because you're a house student. Uh, we also figure that we need to look and find a way to develop, maybe think about developing a curriculum that involves uh, teaching self-discipline in our schools. Uh, somehow either make it part of our middle school classes or involve it in our elementary school. <clears throat> and one of the things that we figured out that we're trying to talk and the way we, that we've talked about is the fact that the dynamics of the family these days are just not the same. So a lot of times, I mean, I can remember myself growing up, I was very lucky in that I had two parents and and when I went home, we had a designated time for homework um, that you spent every night and you made sure you were doing that. And that really taught, they taught me some of those self-disciplines. And today you don't see that a lot. Um, you know, I talked about 32% of our of our kids are free and reduced. And a lot of those types of kids don't have that type of structure as well. And it's also, it's not just free and reduced kids either. It's a lot of other kids in our school. Okay, so where do we go now? Okay, so we, would, we talked about, we looked at some different aspects of things, and in my paper I also wrote this as well. Uh, we want to look to try and create some professional development opportunities for teachers that is directed toward differentiation. And you hear schools talk about it all the time in terms of you know, getting teachers to be able to differentiate, to be able to help every student. And yes, we all focus on it. Now, does it happen in every classroom? You know, probably not necessarily. But it's something that needs to be a priority so that we can reach students um, of both high levels and low levels. We're going to use this differentiation to engage all students in your classroom. Now, a couple things that I noticed that I read on and on my research and that I was able to find. High ability learning type students or even students who are at the higher levels have said and come back and said that when things are fun and relative to them, they're much more engaged. Now, yeah, I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm a math teacher, so I'm the first one to say, okay, yes, not everything I can make fun, not everything I can be able to relate it to a student, but you got to do the best you possibly can to make that happen so that it does engage them in their own learning, which again comes back to the next bullet point, creating fun and interesting lessons to engage all students. Now, a couple of other things that I had found in my research was the fact that students who are able to cooperatively learn, who are given encouragement, and are included, those three things were three big things that I talked about in my paper. Um, they say that they're a lot more apt to be engaged in their learning if you have those three things, as opposed to kind of what we do a lot of times now where we talk about rewarding kids or putting a lot of pressure on kids or making everything a competition, okay? So as we look at those things, trying to be able to use cooperative learning where you're using multiple students together at one time discussing different ideas, using positive reinforcement on uh, their effort and their success, and then also, again, making sure everybody's included in what you're doing as well. And then also, the last part here um, was to find a way to create a curriculum that would discuss what being self-disciplined looks like um, and maybe being able to implement certain things in your elementary or your middle school curriculum to discuss uh, things like self-discipline. And I know a lot of schools have times where they have like uh, homeroom time or uh, we call it at, the, at our high school GPS, Guided Practice and Study, where you could use that time to discuss certain things about self-discipline and those types of things as well. And then finally, I have my resources page here uh, so you can identify where I got my resources. Now, this concludes my uh, Chapter 6 explanation. I'm really interested, and I hope you were able to get something out of this. And I'm really interested to see what everybody else comes up with and to be able to compare some of the things I found with what you were able to find.